Good morning and welcome to Multiply Mornings. My name's Dan. Today, we're talking about who in the world carries $10 million worth of jewelry with them and doesn't have security. our top story of the day, Kim Kardashian. Now, if you don't know who Kim Kardashian is, then, well, you're not missing much, but where have you been? Kim Kardashian and Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian is this, like, celebrity who's famous for doing nothing, but she's famous all the right, and basically, on Sunday night, she was traveling in Paris, and while there, she was robbed by a team of men. Now, they said they were dressed like police. They came in, they, like, tied up a concierge, forced them to open the door, came in. Apparently, she locked the door and was in there. They ended up selling, like, $10 million in jewelry, a $4.5 million ring. Like, who in the world in the right mind has a $4.5 million ring? And doesn't, and, like, why do you need it? Second off, why would you carry it and why would you just have it laying around? Big confusion, a little bit weird, a little bit crazy. Now there's all sorts of speculation trying to go on. French is like, France is like, guys, it's cool. We're not going to hurt you. Come back. It's okay. It's just, don't worry about this. And then they, there's other people speculating this was an inside job because their security guard wasn't there. Everybody wasn't there. The show's staffing. I mean, everything. There was no security. So they're a little bit weirded out and understanding that either A, the information you know about when this loophole, this like space would have perfectly or it's a bit of a little bit of a hmm. Now there's been tons of people coming out and saying lots of mean unfortunate things, I guess. James Corden came out and said like, hey guys, if you can't be nice, shut up. You know, and other people are defending her. Some people are getting mad. I don't know what's going on here. It's definitely a little bit peculiar. Weird things have happened, but what do you think about this? Is there something more sinister going on here? Is it just a sad thing where somebody unfortunately took advantage of it in time and took advantage of it, robbing and making off with millions of dollars worth of jewelry? Let me know what you're thinking, guys. Comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts, okay? Now on to our sweet justice moment of the day. Now this is about the reporter who it was probably a year ago. She came out, she was on live on air, and she she was leaving to go do her passion, which was marijuana sales. And basically, this woman now, since this, has been arrested for illegally running a shop with doing some illegal practices and faces decades in prison because of it. She's even come out saying that this may cost her the rest of her adult life. Now, this seems bizarre, crazy, but a little bit of kind of what goes around comes around. You know what I mean? Because here's the thing. This lady, she openly just on air just, just says this horrible thing then curses on air, leaves a job in the middle of it, goes out in such a flash, becomes a celebrity in a sense instantaneous, and now because of the way she's acted, and not really, but the way she conducts herself, not just there, has carried over to also how apparently she conducted herself in her business, and therefore has got her in a world of trouble. So what do you think about it, guys? Let me, let me know. Is this what she deserves? Just an unfortunate disaster, or is this really just a bigger thing of what this lady's doing and how she's conducting herself? Crazy thoughts, crazy world. I kind of say a little bit of what she deserves, because, I mean, you can't act that way. And on to our next story. Now, if you're an Apple fan or not, the story should interest you. It's about Tim Cook. Now, Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple. He is come out and talking about AR technology. Now, do you know what AR is? It means augmented reality. Now, augmented reality, what that means is it's where, it's kind of like the HoloLens, which is Microsoft's option, Microsoft's augmented reality set. So you have VR, which is like Oculus Rift, and that's the where you put the glasses on, the helmet on, you basically see everything in a completely different reality. It's virtual reality. Augmented reality is where the augment, they put things in the reality where you're looking. So you would see stuff on the wall. Tim Cook's basically talking in this thing about how he thinks augmented reality is the future, not VR. Now he does say in the, in the interview that VR definitely has a place in education and gaming. Not that it is obscure and not to be used, but he said the augmented reality will take hold. He, as he put it, like eating three meals a day, important. That everywhere you go, everybody will be wearing some sort of an augmented reality headset or something along the lines. That's a little bit crazy, a little bit of a stretch. He does talk about that this will take years. He says he thinks we'll see the software here in the next couple in the next foreseeable future but he said in the near not so distant but distant future it's we're going to see it become utmost important to our reality is that crazy to think that ever we go we may in the future be seeing everything augmented to fit whatever this new thing is it's kind of crazy thought we talked about mars travel we talked about cars that drive themselves recently we talked about this i mean it's crazy to see where the world's going in the future now let me know, let me know in the comments up down below what you think about this all right guys moving on to our focus today we're going to be in esther esther is a really beautiful book in the bible that's very simple 
simple and very, just something that we can grasp so easily. Because you see Esther, she's in this position where she has become the king's favorite wife. I mean, he is, she is in this exalted position, and yet she feels so powerless around what's going on. And she sees Mordecai and, and her people being hurt, and she wants to help so strongly. And you know, where I picked up, and I was reading today as I'm finishing up the book, actually, I'm sitting there reading it, and where I was picked up today, where I was reading today was about Haman. Now, Haman was preparing to kill Mordecai. He had this plot to kill all the Jews and eradicate them. Here's Haman, and he is trying to do this. And we see that as he's trying to do this, that, that Esther begins to appeal to the king to try to see his, her people saved. And so it's like really crazy interesting to see how God works this out because he is over there bragging to his friends. Meanwhile, she and God are preparing something that's going to change everything. He's, he's sitting there bragging about how, oh, I've been exalted higher. No one is of a, a, a greater stature than me. And blah, blah, blah. And we see this moment of just like, I got you. Like you can see like, oh man, God has been working this out. Apart from everything else going on, he, the king just happens to be going over an old record book and sees what Mordecai had done. And he says, what am I to do? What has this man been blessed for what he's done for? Has he been exalted for what he did for me? And he goes through and says, no, his name is Mordecai. Brings in, and brings in Haman and says, Haman, go over and get Mordecai for me and exalt him. Take him to the streets yelling, this is the man which the king exalts. Put my robes on him. Give him my horse. Put a crown upon his head. And I'm sure for Haman in this moment of just like, of just utter like he was literally on his way to ask the king if he could kill Mordecai. And he walks in and the king, before he has a chance to say anything, exalt Mordecai. This moment of just, what? Uh, are you sure? Are you, uh, what? This was this moment of just utter and complete shock kind of be going through his mind. And then we see as this unravels, as Esther is able to show the king all that Haman had been doing behind his back and what had happened. And we see this moment of just change in the king and the fate of everything. Now, the reason I want to talk about this today was because sometimes in life we think, what is God doing? Why is this happening this way? Why is it that everything seems to be coming down? In that moment, Esther looks around and sees Mordecai preparing to be killed. She sees her people preparing to be wiped off the face of the earth. And she's just like, what am I going to do? And in that moment, God was in complete control and brought it all down and brought it so that Mordecai was elevated to be the second in command to the king. Saw so all this exaltation and the people of Israel were, were glorified and redeemed. See, God is working something out in your life for the better. He's working to do something great. But the thing is, it's faith. It's trust. It's to keep moving. We can give up and just say, God, I don't trust you anymore. I just, I'm just just going to keep on it. We can keep doing what we need to be doing. Trust in the Lord God. If you do that, God's going to do something great. So that's my challenge to you today is that sometimes life seems overbearing. It seems crazy, but there's a God who's in control, who's painting a picture that we can't see the full picture yet, and he's doing something great. That's where I leave you today, guys. I appreciate you watching today's video. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Let us know that we're doing the right thing, guys. God bless, and I'll see you next time. Bye.